Water is such a vital essential of our daily lives, yet parts of Johannesburg and the Gauteng province at large have been experiencing water shortages and restrictions in the past few weeks. Residents have been forced to deal with water restrictions while also faced with load shedding. Good evening, my name is Zola Shalwana. Welcome to this edition of Soweto Today. Tonight we focus on the water shortages and restrictions that have been affecting some parts of the Gauteng province, including Johannesburg. Of course, we cannot have this conversation alone. So joining us in studio via Zoom is Johannesburg spokesperson for Johannesburg Water, Ms. Buleng Mubedi. Ms. Buleng, welcome to the show and thank you for joining us. Good evening and thank you for having me on your show. Now, we want to understand uh, what is the main reason um, behind water shortages in Gaudeng parts, particularly in Johannesburg. Okay, maybe I can give you a quick preview or a brief of what uh, what really transpired. Mm -hmm. So the water outages were as uh, as a a result of power outages. And mm -hmm. I know that people would say, but then how does water how does power in, uh, affect water? Mm -hmm. But um, on the twenty third, twenty fifth, I'll try to be just quick. Twenty ninth, the thirtieth, and the third of October. Our mm -hmm. bulk supplier, uh, Randwater, experienced power trips at their um, uh, um, uh, purification plant. And that had a very negative impact, especially in our commando system, which feeds your Brixton, Crosby, as well as the Hearst Hill uh, uh, reservoirs. So not that the whole city has been impacted by water shortages, but though that system in particular, because it's the one of our sensitive systems and it gets water from the Aikenhoff pump stations by rainwater and that system was severely impacted by these uh, power outages. Mm -hmm. Now I, I want you to, to talk us through the link between electricity and water as you stated that um, load shedding also contributes to the water issues. How do they you, you know, link? Because people at home might, might wonder like you said how does load shedding you know, lead to uh, water shortages? Okay, um, our pumps run by electricity. So even Randwater's pumps run by electricity. And we've worked with uh, City Power on our end to ensure that some of our systems, in fact, all our systems are exempted from load shedding. However, uh, Randwater systems are in another municipality in Mfulen. So mm -hmm. City Power cannot, they don't have control of that. So you'll find that when rainwater experience or power trips in another municipality, it affects uh, uh, the city of Johannesburg and not only the city of Johannesburg and other metros around that uh, rainwater services. So because pumps uh, run on electricity and that's how we were affected as the city of Johannesburg. Mm -hmm. Now, spring is a season of rain and we have been expecting it since the start of September. Now, due to low chances of rain, does this contribute or play a role in water shortages? In terms of rain, rain, um, you know, people would say the, the Val Dam is full and, uh, you know, there are so many legalities in terms of rainwater pumping from, rain, uh, from, from the Val Dam because it's owned by uh, the Water and Sanitation uh, Department. So there are talks at the moment that rainwater will have alloca additional allocation to pump from the Val Dam so that it has a positive impact in all the municipalities. So yeah, that, that, that's, that's the status at the moment in terms of having to ensure the residents of the Houghton province to have a sufficient supply. However, that, like I said, we have a sensitive system and uh, rainwater's near day um, reservoirs have been low. Even though they've been picking up, you will find that the, fo the flows are not constant. Like if I make an example, uh, Yesterday we had we supposed to have 2,500 liters coming into uh, our systems, and we've been getting it between 2.1 and 2.3. Hence, our systems mm -hmm. are still not yet recovered. But then there are there is a gradual uh, a recovery from their system. Mm -hmm. So now, a water shortage is um, is is not new new music, or rather music to some people's ears. As some areas go as far as not having water for about months or even years, especially in rural areas and informal settlements. Don't you think that our government still has a long way to go to address this issue? 
In terms of informal settlements, because Johannesburg does not have rural, um, in terms of informal settlements, we are ensuring that people, we know that water is a basic need, it's a basic human right need. We ensure that we have additional tankers, mobile tankers, uh, to aid the situation in the areas where there are uh, water shortages. So we are doing something as the, as the government, as well as having, um, getting the other the, uh, the, the departments to formalize this informal settlement, because you know that the, 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 especially the city has mushrooming, we have uh, land invasions in the city of Johannesburg. And as the water uh, department, we are liable to ensure that even those, uh, those who are in informal settlement have sufficient water. So we do have um, supply of water tankers, as well as roaming tankers and standby stand pipes to ensure that they do have uh, a water as a human right, uh, yeah, as a human right. Mm -hmm. So now, uh, Johannesburg Water has been sending out a message to people during this crisis saying that people need to use water sparingly um, so that they are able to deal with this issue that is currently at hand. Um, are people responding well to that? And also, have you been seeing any improvements in terms of how people use water? I think, uh, uh, let me focus mainly in Soweto. Uh, you know that on the 3rd of October, we introduced the, the stage two water restrictions, and this was due to high demand. And looking at Soweto in particular, uh, we have the Middlelands Reservoir as well as the Jabulani Reservoir that are being restricted by 50%. This means that only 50% of what's in the, in the network goes to the, to the, to the, to the residents. And what we've seen is that the Middlelands areas are not much affected. However, those that are serviced by Jabulani, the reservoir is forever at critical low levels. Hence, we always, every day, we're sending out the message to say, these, these, this is a, these are the levels of the, of the reservoirs, and we urge customers to use water sparingly so that we don't have a case whereby other areas like uh, the, the areas that I mentioned earlier, where mm -hmm. they've gone between five to 10 days without water. So we need to work together with the residents of the city of Johannesburg to say, let's, let's try to conserve what we have in our systems while we have our bulk supply recovery from, from, from the, the incidents that has hit them. Mm -hmm. The conversation will obviously continue as time goes on. Now, water experts say that water shortages also have to do with poor governance and decaying infrastructure. The conversation about water shedding in Johannesburg and the Gauteng province at large continues. For now, let's take a short breather and we will see you right after this. If you have just tuned in, we are having a conversation about the ongoing water restrictions that are affecting many residents. And we are still joined by Johannesburg Water Spokesperson, Ms. Buleng Mubedi. Now, uh, Buleng, we understand that Johannesburg Water has set aside a budget of about 350 million rands to address the challenge of water shortages. How will this money be monitored to make sure that it does what um, it was allocated for? Um, as we've indicated that uh, the 340 million that's been set aside, it's mainly for the commando system. And I think this is what we need to understand. But at the um, press briefing that we held on Tuesday, the mayor committed that the city will raise about 100 million for the city's overall infrastructure. But in the, the instance of um, 350 million, that we have put aside, it's mainly, uh, the projects have started uh, with uh, the first project is uh, installing a new pump station at the Crosby uh, uh, um, Reservoir, as well as the main one, I think, because of the water shortages that the re residents of the Brixton, Hill and Crosby uh, residents have been experiencing, it's building of a new Brixton Reservoir and pump station that will then aid the, 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 the frustrations of residents in, in, in Region B in particular. So these projects have started, but then the building of the reservoir, which the, uh, the residents are waiting for, will only start in uh, 2023 to 2024. And we're looking at uh, a, a medium term uh, um, plan, which will then end, end, end in 2024, 2025. So those are already underway, they're on the planning stage, 
So this is something that is currently in, in, in progress and it will be happening. Mm -hmm. Now, um, tell us about the upcoming projects. There are also projects that are expected to commence next year with com um, completion projected for uh, 2025 to assist in eliminating the scarcity of water. Tell us about these projects. Sorry, I did not get that. So there are also projects um, that are expected that, um, well, expected to be completed in 2025 to assist in eliminating the scarcity of water. Please tell us about those projects. Okay, we also have uh, the, the pipe replacement uh, projects. So this is mainly not to, um, we have, uh, Johannesburg has an in, uh, aging infrastructure and we want to agree to that. Mm -hmm. So what we're doing is to eliminate the bursts that are happening, occurring in, in, in the city, or we occurring in the city, we have a, a, a project, uh, the pipe replacement projects, both for water and for sewer to ensure that residents are not frustrated with burst as well as uh, sewer overflows in the city. So I think that's what you are referring to about uh, the, the, those plans for 2024, mm -hmm. 2025. Now, with these new projects, should we perhaps anticipate more water cuts when um, the projects are currently um, underway? Are they not gonna um, by any way interrupt water supply in communities? There will be obviously uh, water interruptions, but then we are not anticipating that these will be long term. So let's say when we have a planned water interruption in a certain area where we're doing a pipe replacement, we will notify our residents uh, between seven, uh, nine to seven days to say on this day, we will be replacing a pipe. Obviously we cannot uh, replace a pipe and not uh, switch off the network. So for us not to have a, 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 an increased number or percentage of uh, physical losses, we need to shut the, the, the reservoir so that we don't have water running into the line to make it seamless for the, for the uh, engineers who are working on the project. So it will be a day at a max, eight hours of, of, no, of no water supply. Mm -hmm. So the Minister of Water and Sanitation mentioned last week that um, there will be more supplies to decrease water restrictions. So can you tell us more about that? What the Minister was referring to uh, was um, they are going to be going into an agreement with rainwater in terms of the additional obstruction from the Val Dam. So when they have that license uh, signed off, then it means that we will have additional. Uh, they will have additional storage uh, to uh, service the whole the whole province uh, of Gauteng. Yes. All right. Now I want us to talk about the importance of saving the little that we have as communities in case you know um, we have crisis of of water. What have you done so far as a department to make sure that you educate people about the importance of using water sparingly and also saving the little that we currently have? Because we don't. Honestly, we don't know what the future has um, for us. Uh, in the past month, I think water, water conservation is what we preach every day. And it's something that we have not stopped over the years. We do have, uh, we preach the word on our social media platform, on our WhatsApp groups that we have with communities. We also send SMSs as well as uh, a little, some kind Ms. Puleng, I think we are uh, campaigns uh, okay. uh, that people are, and so that. Sorry about that. You can continue. I think we just experienced a technical okay. glitch there. Yeah, sorry, sorry about that. There was a message coming in. I was saying we do have campaigns. We have never stopped our water conservation campaigns in different regions where we go, where people are, and we know that. Obviously, during the week, we cannot reach the majority, but then that's why we have our weekend campaigns where we go to the people, to the street corners, where we can find people, taxi ranks, malls, and educating them about water scarcity, especially, and water conservation. So we do have pamphlets that we also leave at the council uh, uh, buildings to say, please distribute these because they are of importance to the residents of the city. So we use our social media platforms as well as physical meetings that we, uh, we, we, we conduct uh, throughout the city. 
All right, Buleng, we are going to take a short, um, a rather short ad break. And after the break, we will continue with the conversation. Make sure that you stay with us because there's more that's coming right after this. Welcome back. You are still watching So It Today. We, so, so It Today, we are still on the topic of water restrictions that have been affecting Johannesburg residents. We are still joined by Zoom by Buleng Mobedi, who is the spokesperson for Johannesburg Water. Now, Buleng, um, we spoke about saving water, right? I want you to take us through, um, you know, if you have any, you know, saving water tips on how people can actually start saving water at home. Okay, they're, they're very simple. And I think this is uh, one of the habits that we do, in fact, at home. Uh, simply by when you're brushing your teeth, don't run, leave the, the, the tap running. Uh, check that you have your leaks in your yard because this, this, the, the, as the city of Johannes, that we don't go into your yard. Uh, well, I cannot talk about uh, uh, using a hose pipe because now that we are in under stage two, water restrictions, we are prohibited to be using uh, our hose pipes, but uh, we are thankful for the rain <laughs> that you can, you know what, the, the rain can do the trick. But then, and when you're washing your car, use a bucket, uh, like the simple things that you have. And I've seen, especially in our communities where when they're doing their washing, they're doing their laundry, they run a tap under a, a, a washing basket. Mm -hmm. that, that's a waste of water and I think it's a habit those things that are a, a habit in our household, if mm -hmm. we try to minimize them, we will be saving a lot of water for the city of Johannesburg. Would you say that uh, people that are um, wasting water, or rather not really using water sparingly, are people that don't pay for water? Because I'm assuming someone that pays or rather receives a bill of water towards the, um, towards the end of the month will make sure that they you know, count every drop because they know that they'll have to pay for it month end. Absolutely. Uh, at, uh, we've been saying every do drop counts. Uh, we even have tips on our social media platforms to say uh, even for rainwater harvesting, uh, we are expecting a lot of rain, especially over this coming weekend. Let's take that water. Let's let's try to use it for, for other things like doing our washing, uh, washing our cars and watering our gardens. Mm -hmm. Those small and small and things that we can do, they, they really, really uh, um, uh, go a long way. Mm -hmm. Now, it's one thing to not have water, but there's also a matter of having water, but not clean water. How can one ensure that the water that they have is clean enough to drink? Because now that there's a water crisis, some people opt for other sources of water, such as the river and dam water. River and dam water, uh, you can use it, it, they are regarded as grey water, so you can use them for watering your garden and also washing the cars because, I mean, at the end of the day, you use a detergent to, 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 to wash your car, to do your laundry, but then obviously for use it for... for sorry, sorry about that. No problem. Um, yeah, so you can use those other sources to, even your borehole, mm -hmm. other people, they do have borehole, you can use that water to do your washing, uh, get, get, get the system uh, connected into your household so that you can do your washing, wash your cars. Uh, there, there's, a, there's a lot that people can do without using the municipal water, as, as well as those who have food. Mm -hmm. You can use the rain, rain, rain will be dropping now. It has started on, on, on Thursday. I remember the mayor on Tuesday say, let's pray for water, for, for the rain. And yes, it rained. Mm -hmm. So yeah, rainwater, grey water, get, let's try to use other 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 sources uh, to minimize uh, using the municipal water, especially not for consumption. Mm -hmm. So now currently, um, should we expect any water cuts or restrictions in, in the Gauteng province, uh, particularly in the city of Johannesburg? Ms. Buleng? Yes, you can. Can you repeat the question, please? No, I said, um, currently, um, should we expect any water cuts or restrictions as the province or particularly the, you know, the city of Johannesburg? The water restrictions are still in place until we are advised otherwise by rainwater. So, and if, um, 
anything changes, uh, we will be advising our residents. But then even after stage two restrictions, we move back to stage one or level one water restrictions where we will be saying we will be giving tips under level one or stage two. So mm -hmm. at the moment we are under stage two, so we not uh, residents are, are prohibited to irrigate or water their gardens, uh, not to use the hose pipe to clean driveways. That's another thing that's, mm -hmm. that's very popular. <laughs> and what their cars with the hose pipe. So let's let's avoid using hose pipes to do anything. Can we just start using, go back to basics. Let's use a broom mm -hmm. to, to, to clean our driveways. Okay, since you spoke about, um, you know, stages of water cuts, um, with load shedding as well, we are on stages. And there are apps that, um, you know, have been, um, well, people have to make sure that people are updated about load shedding, about power cuts in their areas. Now, as Johannesburg Water, um, do you have something similar to that? Because it looks like we are about to experience more water cuts uh, with the projects that are currently underway and the upcoming projects. So what are you doing to make sure that people have those similar apps so that they are updated about such, um, you know, such events? Okay, I'll, I, I think I need to also clarify something with stage two water restrictions and stage two uh load shedding mm -hmm. uh with load shedding it's just a switch okay so we are able to give you they are able to give you um a schedule to say between this time and this time they will be switching on and off but then with water it's something that's different hence we are preaching this message every day on our social media as well as on our groups to say if we were to say we are water shed shedding then that will have an impact on our pipes because if you go and switch off uh, the valve and switch it on again, then we have something like uh, what we call air log. And when you air log, then we have bursts in the in the areas. That's why some of the meters or some of the reservoirs are not restricted and some are because of the, that flexibility uh, uh, and how we can play with, 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 with the system. So uh, just to clear the misconception, it's not water shedding. We can never be able to water shed because it will have impact on our pipes uh, and we will have more bursts. And what more, how, how will we aid mm -hmm. um, uh, 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 these when we are we are the cause of, of, of bursting our own parts or infrastructure? Okay, and I think that's a relief, you know, after you just said we won't experience water shedding because I can imagine how people would be able to go to school and also work. Now, briefly, for any important information that members of the public that would like to know, um, how can they go about that? I've all the information uh, regarding what the interventions that we're doing are, co are communicated through our social media platforms. We also have an SMS portal. If there is a, a planned interruption for a certain area, we are able to send a personalized messages to the, 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 the affected um, uh, uh, residents about the planned maintenance, whether it's a planned maintenance or emergency. So we have those kind of services as Johannesburg Water or, or, or should I say platforms where they can be able to, to reach us as Johannesburg Water. All right, thank you so much, Ms. Puleng, for joining us and gracing us with your presence. Now, that was Ms. Puleng, the spokesperson for Johannesburg Water, helping us make sense of the water crisis that the Gauteng province is currently faced with and also helping us unpack ways in which the water utility, with, of course, the help of the government, is addressing the matter at stake. Well, that's how we wrap up today's episode of Soweto Today. Remember, we love hearing from you, so please feel free to engage with us about the show by simply sending us an email on Today at sowetotv.co.za. Alternatively, you can contact us on 011-933-3000. From myself and the rest of the team, we will see you on the next news bulletin that's coming right after this. So, goodbye for now.